M97, the Owl Nebula, is a typical planetary nebula. It's in the constellation of Ursa Major, the Great Bear. And planetary nebulae, I think, are interesting because they tell us about the fate of our star, the Sun. In about five billion years' time, the Sun will become a planetary nebula. This could be how the Sun could look in five billion years' time. This basically is a star with a mass of maybe twice the mass of the Sun, and it's now uh, kind of almost at the end of its life. Most of its time it spends burning hydrogen in the center, and then towards the end of its life it kind of bloats up. It bloats up to become a, a cool red giant star. And during that phase it kind of loses the outer hydrogen-rich envelope of the star. And these pulsars drive away this huge giant hydrogen-rich envelope, leaving behind this kind of dying ember. And so what we're seeing actually is this region around it is basically being illuminated, being lit up by the hot star in the centre. You know, this one probably has a temperature of maybe 50,000 degrees, so maybe 10 times hotter than the present day sun, but much smaller. Now when we look at a planetary nebula like M97, the Owl Nebula, we see different colours there. We see greenish colours, which are due to emission from uh, oxygen gas, and we see sort of reddish colours, often around the edge, that's due to emission from hydrogen gas. They're just elements that were in the outer layers of the star that were puffed off into space when that planetary nebula was formed. Another thing we notice is the structure in the nebula. Now, the Owl Nebula has what look like two owl's eyes staring out at us. What that's thought to be is a consequence of the geometry that we're seeing. When this gas was expelled from the star, it probably went off in a sort of bipolar, two directions, in like a sort of cone or cylinder spreading away from the star. And it just so happens that in the projection we're looking at it, we see kind of the two ends of that cone or cylinder, and they appear as the two eyes of the owl looking at us. If we compare to other planetary nebulae like M57, the Ring Nebula, or M27, the Dumbbell Nebula, we see different shapes in there. The Ring Nebula we're probably seeing pretty much end on, and the Dumbbell Nebula we're seeing pretty much side on. It's called the Owl Nebula because uh, Lord Ross had a big telescope in Ireland in the 1800s. It was the biggest telescope in the world at the time. So this is Ross's sketch of M97. The Owl Nebula. So this is how the Owl Nebula got its name. I think it's really sweet. It looks like a little Japanese animated sort of... It does, isn't it? Like a Pokemon or something. Nowadays, we can use CCD cameras and we can detect things and you can measure things very accurately. It, up until that point, really up until the you know, modern era of photography, it was always really a case of just sketching and drawing. That's what a lot of amateurs do still. The modern images of M97 don't quite support the original Ross sketches of the Owl Nebula. The two stars here, only one of them is actually real. These are the two things which look like the kind of eyes of the owl. You can see these two dark patches here and here, of which only one has kind of a pupil. We've taken this image with the 0.5 meter on top of the WHT building here in the observatory in La Palma. With only a half a meter telescope and a 10 minute long exposure, we're still not seeing a huge amount of light, so that just kind of goes to show how faint this object is photographically. It's actually slightly easier to see with the human eye um, directly through a telescope than it is to photograph in this case. But obviously with a 10 minute long exposure then you're seeing a lot more as well. You're quite pleased with the image? It's certainly more than I was expecting to be able to see. I thought we'd just see a bit of a smudge but there's some, there's evidently some structure here and it matches with what we're expecting so yeah I'm very impressed. I think it looks like a 10 pin bowling ball. <laughs> I think that should be the new name. It's one of only four planetary nebulae in the whole of Messier's catalogue. So you might think, well, they're quite rare objects. Well, not so. Um, every star, less than about 10 times the mass of the Sun, will eventually evolve into a planetary nebula. But the lifetime of that shell of gas and dust that's been expelled is only 10,000 or 20,000 years, something like that. So although they're very common, they don't live very long. So, for example, the Sun, you know, uh, lives for maybe 10 billion years. If it goes through a planetary nebula phase, that phase is going to last thousands of years. So it's a very short-lived phase. And also the fact is when, when the planetary nebula are born, this nebula around them is very small. And so to actually see a planetary nebula easily from the ground using small telescopes, it has to be relatively old for it to get big enough to actually see the contrast between the nebula and the star. And it's got to be relatively nearby. So if we go back to the olden days before the internet, I used this catalogue. There's no online catalogues in those days. It was all done in, in old-fashioned books. And so this is, a, this is an old catalogue from around about 20 years ago 
of galactic planetary nebulae. And so some of them are dead easy to find, like this one and like the Owl Nebula. And so this is the Owl Nebula. It's also known as NGC 3587. And this is its galactic coordinates. And so this one's a big easy one. It's, it's big and bright and diffuse. Whereas some other planetary nebulae, these other ones with the arrow pointing at it, you can barely tell them apart from just stars, just because they're far away or they're relatively young. So in five billion years' time, when the sun swells up to become a red giant prior to turning into a planetary nebula, it will engulf the orbit of Mercury, it will engulf Venus. As it expands like that, it will lose a bit of mass, and because of that mass loss, the orbit of the Earth will probably move out slightly. So although the sun is expanding, the Earth's moving out, and it probably won't quite engulf the Earth. But even so, it's going to be far too hot for life to exist on Earth at that point. I very much doubt whether there'll be any humans left on the Earth by then. We'll either have wiped ourselves out long before or we'll have uh, headed off into space and colonised some other part of the galaxy by then. I should also say, using this big telescope in Ireland, uh, not only did Ross draw this sketch, but another observer at the time, using the same telescope in the mid-1800s, described it as a most intricate group of spiral arcs disposed around two starry centres, looking like the visage of a monkey. So it could almost have been the Monkey Nebula. <laughs>